Hey, Drew here, and I have to say, I think I would say that this episode of American Gods, the episode titled Serious Moonlight, I would have to call it a filler episode, except then I would probably be bound to call this entire third season a filler season, and I don't really want to do that, so I won't say that this was a filler episode, but the plot has kind of very much ground to a halt in this series, and they're padding things to such a point. What was already a slow section of the story is being padded excessively, I would argue. And the new stuff, the stuff that moves outside of Lakeside, which you know was among those portions of the book that people had mixed feelings about, I thought it was interesting, and I thought it gave an interesting picture of small communities. But again, it, you know, when you're taking something that was a slower portion of the book where they're kind of moving away from the overall story of the gods uniting to fight each other, it's already, you know, a slower portion of the story. And then to add to it, it becomes just a little bit excessively padded, as I said. And the stuff that wasn't taking place in Lakeside, to my mind, it just felt like a retread of stuff that we've seen in previous seasons and a lesser retread at that. Uh, I've heard it said that if you're going to adapt a story, it's better to adapt an average novelist than to try and adapt a superior novelist. And I think that this show kind of proves the point of that because this isn't really, you know, an action adventure story, an exciting action adventure story with tons of action scenes. And it doesn't really have a fast moving and exciting plot. It's really about the ambiance and the mood that Neil Gaiman captured in his novel. It's not that there's no plot, but at the pace that they're going, they really, really have to capture his mood or there's not going to be a lot to bring people back. And I fear that while they're making a good effort, I think that they've hit the point where they're just getting diminishing returns for their efforts at this point. I did enjoy getting to see a little bit more of Lakeside. I think that the Lakeside scenes were the scenes in this episode that I thought were the most intriguing. I think that it was nice to get to see Lila Loren uh, after her time as Angela on Power, getting to see her again in another Stars show, uh, this time playing this character of Margaret Olsen. And, you know, obviously Shadow's a little bit slow on the uptake with her. I think that it's pretty obvious something happened to her son that she doesn't want to talk about and that has kind of closed her off to the outside world. But I enjoy the tension between these two characters and I'm interesting to, interested to see their relationship develop. But otherwise, I did not find the townsfolk particularly memorable in the book. I think that the book, these sequences were more memorable for Neil Gaiman's uh, prose and for the eloquent way that he kind of just involved you in the world of Lakeside. And I think that, you know, again, it's hard for them to replicate that in a TV show. Uh, I, you know, they're trying to make Anne Marie Hinselman, they're trying to make her this colorful character. And I do think Julia Sweeney is doing a fine job playing her. But for the most part, I just didn't think that she was that memorable as a character. And again, I think that the show continues to have awesome visuals. I particularly liked the visual at the end of the episode where they sweeped around the lake to show that car that had been left in the middle of the lake uh, to break through at some point. Again, I did think that there was an ominous feeling to that scene, the way that the camera moved, and I really liked the song choice at the end of the episode. I thought it ended on a strong note, much better than the very easily resolved cliffhanger from last episode. But for the most part, again, Lakeside moved slowly, and outside of Lakeside, it felt like a retread. Like, we got a scene with Bill Quist again, uh, and, you know, another one of those sex scenes where she uh, swallows a man, uh, literally. And, you know, the, the scene, to me, though, it didn't really feel like it was motivated by the needs of the story so much as they were like, we need to put something exciting on screen. It's been a while since we've shown her do this. Let's just have it happen. And again, they, they didn't establish anything too major about the character. They showed that something is wrong with her. She's starting to lose her edge but they didn't really establish much else and the scene to me just didn't feel uh, necessary altogether. Uh, again, you know, we had a scene where we're having this uh, memorial service for uh, Chernabog's sister. But again, you know, like we didn't learn anything new about uh, Chernabog or Zoria here. It was just another scene where I think they're kind of treating these characters like recurring characters where they're like, well, we can't go that long without having uh, these characters be in the show. They have to have like an episode every season. 
so that we can keep the actors happy, but we didn't really establish anything new here. We already knew that uh, Chernabog had sworn to help Mr. Wednesday in his war against the new gods, and we already had had basically the same exact scene between Shadow and Zoria, so this whole thing just felt kind of unnecessary and just like they wanted to get Shadow out of Lakeside and to have some more scenes with these characters, but they didn't really have a justification for them in the narrative. They did introduce the character of Tyr, this episode played by Dennis O'Hare, and clearly there's some history between him and Odin. He is the god of war, and he kind of has associations with Mars. Uh, I liked the production design for his office. I particularly liked the statue on the desk that Odin and Tyr kept pointing at each other, and I kind of felt like they had intentionally made the point of the statue look like the point of uh, Tyr's beard, and I thought that was a nice touch. Uh, especially, I thought it was clever having him be a dentist. I think that's an interesting place for the god of war to be. But on the whole, you know, this character doesn't seem like a necessary addition to me. Obviously, he's being introduced so that we can find out about Blythe Danner's character next episode. And I'm interested to see her because I enjoy her acting, but uh, this episode they didn't really do much with Tyr other than have him show up. I enjoyed some of the visuals, particularly the buffalo in the store. And I liked the, you know, the shots of the snow uh, in the opening scene. I thought that those were very, very well shot. The cinematography was excellent. And there were other great visuals this episode. But on the whole, I don't think that they're really adding a whole lot new to the mythology of this story. I do enjoy spending time in this world. I enjoy getting to spend time with Mr. Wednesday and Shadow and all the other characters. And I'm going to keep watching, of course, but I do wish that they had a little bit more justification for taking us on this journey. Even like the opening scene, to me, it really, some of the most interesting sequences in the show have been the cold opens, but this cold open just felt like a cold open to have a cold open, and it really didn't transition well into the actual uh, meat of the story this episode. I felt like the transition between uh, these Native American being killed and sacrificed, I felt like the transition between that and the rest of the story was pretty vague at best. Uh, and it just wasn't that memorable compared to some of the other cold opens that they've had. So those are my thoughts for what they are worth. If you're interested in seeing my upcoming reviews of other shows, which there's not a lot of new shows coming out, but I'm staying pretty busy in the short term uh, thanks to the shows that are currently on. But I'm looking forward to potentially reviewing Clarice when that comes out on CBS All Access. And if you're interested in seeing my review of that show and other shows, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.